Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the price elasticity of supply. In the prior session, we looked at the price elasticity of demand. So it will be helpful if you can view the prior session because the formula is basically the same except we are using with supply rather than demand. But you have to understand the difference between supply and demand. So the price elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of the quantity supplied relative to change in its price. So when we change the price, how much would supply changes? What's the what's that measurement? So we're going to quantify the percentage change in quantity supplied relative to the price percentage change in price. So simply put, change in quantity, delta in quantity, which is a percentage divided by the delta in price percentage. But here we are dealing with supply not demand basically the formula for demand is the same except rather than here we are dealing with supply in the prior session using the same formula for demand i'm going to go over the formula in details a little bit more so a higher price elasticity of supply indicate a greater sensitivity of suppliers to prices and change so if we have a higher greater sensitivity a higher sensitivity it means supplier can react quickly to prices Lower elasticity suggests a less responsive response. Now we need to know why. Why some suppliers can react quickly to prices and changes and others cannot. There are reasons for that. Technically, it's business reasons, um, resource reasons, limitation reasons, input reasons. We'll, we'll look at those later. But this is what we're going to be discussing. So next, we're going to look at the formula. We're going to look at a few examples and factors that will affect price elasticity. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with the formula, the formula is the same as price elasticity of demand. It's the percentage change in quantity supplied, which is the change in quantity, which is the percentage change in quantity, divided by the percentage change in price. And this is how we find the price elasticity. Now, again, if you don't know how to find the percentage change, how do you find the change? You subtract the initial value or the old value from the final value or the new value. You will take the change, whatever you find in one, divide the result by the initial value. Then you multiply by 100 to express it as a percentage. So simply put, if we told you the price of a product increase from 50 to 60, First, you compute the dollar change. The dollar change is 10, and you, the change divided by the initial value of 10, and we say the change is 20%. Now, bear in mind, as I mentioned earlier, it's not the same as going from 60 to 50. Here, the change is 10, but you're dividing by 60, and the percentage is 16.67%. So just be careful, be aware, use a calculator. So let's take a look at an example that applies the formula and specifically, I'm going to tell you, we're going to find elasticity in this example less than one. I already gave you the answer, but we have to see how we compute it. And more, more importantly, what does it mean to us? What does it mean to us? Suppose you're a farmer who grows apples. Currently, you produce 1,000 kilograms when the price is $2 per kilogram. This is, this is the current production and the price is $2. Now, there was a recent increase in demand. You know, why? Well... The consumer uh, taste for apple changed. There was some report that apples is good for you. So the price of apple is rises to $3 per kilogram. As a result, you decided to increase your apple production. Now you produce 1,200 kilograms of apple. So let's compute the price elasticity of demand. Again, how do we compute this? The percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. So let's do that. The quantity, the percentage change in the quantity went from 1,200 kilogram to, uh, from 1,000 to 1,200, it's 200 divided by 1,000, the initial value. The quantity increased by 20%. Let's look at the price. The price went from $3, from 
to three dollars so the change is one divided by two well that's 50 percent times 100 equal to 50 percent now we can find the elasticity 20 percent divided by 50 percent so the change in quantity divided by the change in price again percentage we'll find out the price elasticity in this example 0 0.4 0 0.4 is less than one what does that mean it means the elasticity is relatively inelastic it means the producers can't keep up with the prices the prices went up by by 50 percent the farmer was able to produ to increase their production by 20 percent this means a 50 percent increase in price led only to a 20 percent in increase in quantity now let me ask you why why do you think that's the case I mean my parents uh, we grow apples so I'm, I'm familiar with this industry why do you think that's the case do you think you could just grow more apples now it takes time it takes years to do that so farmers might face limitation in responding quickly to price changes to the factors like the growing season limited land availability you may not have enough land and if you have enough land maybe you don't have you have to put apple trees and it takes time or the time required to expand production let's take a look at an example where elasticity is equal to one which is seldom that's the case but for the sake of mathematically illustrating this it's a good idea suppose you own a factory that produces t-shirts currently you manufacture 10,000 t-shirts per month when the price is 10 so you're happy supplying 10,000 when the price is 10 however due to demand decline I don't know somebody else uh, producing t-shirts uh, people don't like t-shirts anymore for whatever reason the price the price drops to eight as a result you decided to do what reduce your production I'm not gonna produce at eight dollars I'm only gonna produce eight thousand so let's see what is the price elasticity in this example well if we find the percentage change in quantity supplied which is negative twenty percent two thousand divided by negative 2,000 divided by 10,000 and the price is negative 2 divided by negative 10 is negative 20 again negative by negative equal positive so when you always when you compute the price elasticity it's going to be a positive but remember whether that's positive or negative we look at the absolute value which is one the, the, the price elasticity is one okay what does that mean it means there's there's nothing it's the same in this example the price elasticity is one indicating unit elasticity the decrease in price by 20 percent lent to a proportionate decrease in quantity by 20 percent so suppliers were able to adjust their production exactly the same as the price seldom that's the case in the real world but for the purpose of the mathematically computing it it's a good idea let's look at an example where elasticity is greater than one what does that mean before we do the computation it means you can as the price goes up you can produce more you can produce more let's consider an example a company that produces hand knit sweaters suppose the initial price is fifty dollars and the company is producing one thousand of those sweaters per month again their sweaters the sweaters are popular there was an increase in demand and as a result the company decided to increase the price to 70 because there's an increase in demand well as a result you have to increase your production you have to expand your production now we can produce 1500 sweaters per month let's compute the price elasticity for this company well the change in supplied 500 dollar 500 units divided by 1000 50 percent increase in quantity supplied the price is the difference is 20 dollars divided by the initial price is 40 dollars if we compute the price elasticity it's 1.5 1.5 is greater than one greater than one what does that mean it means the quantity supplies is relatively responsive to changes in price it indicate elasticity of supply the quantity supplied is relatively responsive so as soon as the price went up by 40 percent we jacked up our production by 50 percent now why can we do that why can we do that why can we do that well it could be that we were able to hire more knitters increase knitting hours or people working with us increase their hours or source additional knitting material to ramp up production so in order to do that you have to have the resources you cannot have any limitation because you need to increase this because a 40 percent increase in price you increase quantity supplied in 50 50 percent it's an elastic supply let's take a look at summary but basically just to make sure if it's a greater than one it means the supply is elastic it means that the quantity supplied is more responsive to change in price in other words a small percentage in price lead to a proportionally larger percentage in the quantity supplied less than one inelastic supply the quantity supplied is relatively less responsive 
the changes in price. In other words, a given percentage change in price leads to a proportionally smaller percentage in quantity supplied. Now, what factors what factors influence the price elasticity? One, one factor is the availab availability of inputs. If you don't have inputs, if you don't have enough knitters, then you cannot ramp up the production of the sweaters. So if the input required are readily available, suppliers can respond more quickly to a change in price, resulting in higher elasticity of supply. On the other hand, if the input, whatever you are producing, if you don't have the raw material, are limited or specialized, it may be difficult for suppliers to adjust production level, leading to lower elasticity. Now, even if you have lower elasticity in the real world, what you hope to do is to, if, the, if you cannot produce, hopefully the price is increased enough to offset that shortage for you shortage in profit because you want to produce more you can't hopefully the increase in price will make the difference suppose there are two companies a and b both producing wooden furniture right here company a has easy access to a variety of high quality wood suppliers while company b relies on a single specialized supplier for their woods so company a is more diversified they have more resources company b not as much let's assume there's an increase in demand for wooden furniture leading to a rise in market price as a result, both companies fade the decision whether to increase their production or not. Of course, you want to increase your production. What's the difference here? Company A, it has wide range of suppliers. It can easily switch between supplier or negotiate a better deal to obtain more wood and therefore expand production and sell more wooden furniture. Not for company B. Not for company B. So availability of inputs will influence the price elasticity of supply. Another example that will that will not 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 example another factor that influences the price elasticity of supply is time horizon. How much time you have? Okay, the time horizon refers to the length of time given for suppliers to adjust their production. In general, the price elasticity of supply tend to be higher in the long term compared to the short run. Of course, always in the long run, companies can adjust, find new raw material, find new suppliers. But what matters is in the short run. You want to, how long, how much time do you have? For instance, if a price of oil increases, it may take some time for oil producer to explore and develop new oil fields or invest in alternative energy sources because you cannot just produce more oils like that. In the short run, the supply of oil may be relatively inelastic, but over the long run, they can find new land, they can uh, build, they can uh, extract that oil. New sources are discovered and alternative technology are developed and the elasticity of supply increases. So although, in other words, initially in the short run, you might have inelasticity, but suppliers always find ways to increase their production. If we go back to COVID, same thing with COVID, uh, companies that were not producing enough, enough wipes, alcoholic wipes, well, you give them enough time, they will do it. Or not enough oxygen tanks. Well, you give them enough time, they will increase their production. Fact, all, and other factors that influence the Price elasticity of supply is production capacity. In a sense, they are related. Production capacity input just tell you this in diff from a different perspective. If the supplier have access or un underutilized capacity, they can respond more quickly and more readily to changes in price. So, if you have excess capacity and there is more demand, that demand is always that demand can be met easily because you have access. The best example is consider an airline that operate flight with empty seats or not full. They don't have you know full. Uh, full trips, empty seats. Well, that's what happened. If the demand for air travel increase, the airline can accommodate more passenger by utilizing its spare capacity. In this case, the price elasticity of supply will be higher due to availability of unused production capacity. But if all the seats were taken and there was an increase, then you cannot take advantage of that. All what you can do is you can increase your prices and hopefully increased prices will offset some of that. Also, production time and complexity. How, com how complex is what you are producing? The time required to produce and the complexity of production. If, if, if you need to change your production and your processes are complex, then you're not elastic because you need more time. If the production process is time consuming or interact, if the production process is time consuming or intricate, Suppliers may find limitation in adjusting production levels quickly because it gets more complicated. For example, if you are ha if you have handcrafted luxury goods that required skilled artisans, well, guess what? You may have a lower 
elasticity of supply compared to a company that's mass producing item because it's more difficult for you to expand your production why because it's considered more complex you need to require more time and special skills also barriers to entry could influence the price elasticity of supply the presence of barriers what could be a barrier of entry well high capital requirements for example if you want to produce cars okay if you want to start a car manufacturing company well you're gonna you're gonna need billions and billions of dollars well if you want to start a consulting company the barriers of entry is much more a much more e much much more easier or you want to start an accounting firm you could have regulatory restriction for example if you want to start a pharmaceutical company you have to go through the fda uh, or you might need patent certain patent that could impact the price elasticity of supply when the barriers of to entry are high the number of supply number of suppliers may be limited resulting in lower elasticity of supply for example if we're talking about pharmaceutical industries faces strict regulation and lengthy approval process for new drugs well you cannot just say well another company can produce it it's not that easy this would restrict the number of suppliers and hinder responsiveness to supply to changes in price even if the prices go up for a certain drug but because it's in high demand you cannot create overnight a pharmaceutical company that can research the drug produce it get the fda approval first of all it's expensive to it's time consuming therefore if there's a barrier barriers of entry it could impact negatively the elasticity of supply what should you do now go to farhat lectures and work mcqs that's going to cover this topic elasticity of supply price elasticity of demand those are important topics on the CPA exam. Important and easy topics where you can pick up answers quickly and gain points as long as you practice multiple choice. My job is to help you understand this concept. Your job is to learn it. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.